Well, I didn't really know what to expect. I thought it was going to be this kind of vast facility, guys in white coats, very studious and, you know, very serious. These people that work at CERN are pioneers. You know, they're genuine pioneers. They're trying to understand everything about the world around them. The fact that the internet was essentially invented at CERN just revolutionised the last 30 years of human history. An elite headquarters of some of the most groundbreaking scientists on Earth. When do you ever get the chance to go to CERN? We're not scientists. We'd, we'd, there's no reason they'd want the likes of us there. It was a question of going out there and, and experiencing it. It felt just like the world's most progressive university campus. And it made it so much more than just going somewhere and playing a gig, and also somewhere that not everyone gets to go to. I'm in CERN, <laughs> in the most amazing fucking room that I wish was my living room. The scientists I got to meet were nothing like what I expected scientists to be like. There's no guarding of knowledge, there's no snobbery or anything like that chap from northeast of England who I initially made the mistake of thinking he was a roadie for the festival because he was just lugging all our amps in until he kind of mentioned that he managed a team of a thousand people analysing data from the Large Hadron Collider. I do it because I think it's um, really fucking yeah. interesting, I think it should be done. So <laughs> let's all drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> it was an amazing moment where he was explaining particle physics to us at three in the morning surrounded by bottles of wine, you know, under the light of the moon with the Swiss mountains on either side of us. It's nice to meet ridiculously driven people and find that they're just a laugh as well. John Ellis, he'd stay up uh, drinking rum with us till two in the morning, you know. He, he was a pretty cool guy, but I mean, so intelligent, you know, way above anything, way, way above the level I'm operating. I got quite a misty eye about it while I was there, about all these people just following this kind of non-profit driven vocation in life. You know, people with a genuine calling that's, that's a really positive thing. For me, I mean, the, the highlight was when, you know, a couple of incredibly nice guys said, oh, well, there's a, there's a party going, a physicist party, let's, let's see what that's all about. Didn't know where the hell we were going, didn't know the people that we were going with, but they seemed really nice. The streets are named after miscellaneous physicists. The oldest one is Democritus, Greek philosopher who first said that uh, if you cut something small enough, eventually you'd get to something you couldn't cut. Atomic theory, that's what the word atom means, it's the thing that cannot be cut. The, the guy that was taking us to this party said, um, whatever you do, don't go down there. There's just a really bad chance of radiation poisoning. <laughs> and then we eventually got to this sort of huge building that seemed to be some kind of semi-abandoned laboratory. We were in this incredible place that was like this enormous warehouse that had all been separated into laboratories. And the laboratories literally went as far as the eye could see. Sort of pipes everywhere, you know, really industrial looking. Got taken down this corridor into this huge room where there was loads of whiteboards with equations on it. Prince's controversy coming out of the stereo, everyone drinking beer and eating pizza. Felt like something out of a film, like a kind of 80s John Hughes comedy, where you know, some ditzy person goes and gets taken into this world and kind of you know, realises that all these people who you thought were really sort of studious and serious are actually just having as much fun as, as anyone else in the world. Seeing the Hadron Collider was even better than playing the show. The, the guy that was doing the, the tour for us, uh, before we went in, he said, um, he said, OK, you know, you, you all know the myth of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. What do you, what do you say to get the, the door to the cave open? O open Sesame. Just to see this, this enormous machine underground, the purpose of it existing there is to, is to find out the root of all known existence, and that's going to fry your brain a bit, right? It wasn't meant for good or evil, it was just meant for discovering incredible that we live in a world that that exists, that governments will get together and fund something and it's so, it's so awe-inspiring. Fuck knows how it works. It's, it's no exaggeration to say there was quite profound feeling the way that science and art interacted. There's a narrative being constructed at CERN and it's the narrative of who we are why we're here and how we got here. You could go back to the, to the Greeks and, and, and everything whereby science and, and art were considered part of the same discipline. You know, you can make music for money. There's a lot of people who make music purely for money. The people at CERN 
aren't in it for the money, they're in it for discovering new things and for wondering what happens when you put different combinations of things together and how that can teach us really important things. It's a sort of voyage of discovery either way, I think. And it was quite heartening in a way. And I think they both share that kind of common goal. At the end of the day, but we're going in totally different directions doing it.